Today we're testing the new-ish GTX 1050 Ti notebook GPU, which is ultimately a desktop GPU in a notebook with some changes to things like clock speed. This has been the trend for a while now with the end of the M series, or at least seeming end of it. Today we're using a GE 727RE Apache Pro notebook from MSI, which has a 4GB version of the 1050 Ti, though there are also 2GB versions. And that's got an i7-7700HQ CPU at 2.8GHz with no changes otherwise. The GE 727RE Apache Pro is coming up in a separate review for us soon, but today we're just looking at the 1050 Ti GPU performance rather than reviewing the notebook as a whole. Before getting to those, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA and their 1080 Ti SC2, which we've recommended fairly highly for its build quality and uh, the ICX sensors, which are kind of fun to play with. You can check our full SC2 review for the 1080 Ti if you're curious to learn more, or you can click the link in the description below to find the product page for the 1080 Ti SC2. Looking at the GTX 1050 Ti GPU alone, rather than reviewing the entire notebook, helps us because we can establish a baseline for where you should expect the 1050 Ti to perform for all the notebooks. Now, uh, because notebooks have differences in CPU and other spec, it's not like we can just swap the one part. That means you'll see some variance from one notebook to the other. But for the most part, they all pretty much use i7s. They're very similar hardware other than that GPU component. Uh, so this will allow us to establish the baseline. The review is coming up separately. We've got some thoughts on the notebook to talk about in that this dedicated review. Uh, but before getting to the testing, a couple notes on methodology. Notebooks are tricky because notebooks in the review world are all basically loners. We don't keep them like we do with a lot of the other parts where you keep it because you want to do regression testing as drivers iterate, as there are changes to games, game patches, new games, whatever. All that stuff changes so you want to hang on to it so you can do regression testing it's called where you revisit an older piece of hardware or you try and figure out things as they iterate and update. Notebooks aren't the same way because they're such an expensive unit to loan out for review, manufacturers generally don't give them out. That means that we are going based off of some older tests here. We've got some new tests like Sniper Elite 4 and Overwatch for the 1050 Ti, uh, but those tests don't necessarily include things like the GTX 1060 notebook GPU because that one uh, was on loan to us, as was the 1080 notebook GPU. We only have that for Mordor and Metro Last Light, and the same is true for a couple of the others. However, because we're mostly looking for scaling anyway, we can still rely on those older game benchmarks, which are fantastic for the reason that they do not update. They are done with development, so we can trust that they haven't changed, there haven't been driver changes because they're old enough, so that lets us look at scaling, and then we can look at an overview of all results just for a baseline of where the 1050 Ti is. We're starting with a chart overviewing the 1050 Ti laptop's performance and all the games tested, and we'll then move to the comparative charts versus other GPUs after. Testing Overwatch at 1080p with ultra settings, we land at around 92 FPS average in a match, or 105 average in our deprecated training mode benchmarks. These are only kept for comparison versus the old data since the scaling is still linear. Our recent Overwatch graphics optimization guide discusses new methods we use for match testing, which includes a several minute long test pass. For another modern title, Sniper Elite 4 with DirectX 12 asynchronous compute enabled, and a high settings with 1080p resolution places the 1050 Ti at 54 FPS average. Those are at 43 and 40 FPS respectively, 1% and 0.1%. This is reasonably playable given that we're on a laptop grade piece of hardware and have different tolerances than desktops. Looking next to GTA 5, we're nearing 60 FPS average on the 1050 Ti notebook, though lows don't scale quite as well here as in other games. But that's more of a game level difference than a hardware level difference something that we'll see when we get to the GTA 5 standalone benchmarks. The hardware ultimately executes the game though, so we can draw some limitations there as to how much the game is responsible for, but let's move on to some comparative charts for the older games. This is one of the few games where we have every relevant laptop GPU present, so we'll spend some time here. Shadow of Mordor is a bit of a throwback. It gives us the most data for percent scaling comparison since we've used it heavily for benchmarking dating back to really a couple years ago. At 1080p with ultra settings, the 1050Ti notebook covers around 58 FPS average, and that places it approximately 23% ahead of the GTX 970M notebooks. The 970M is from before Nvidia's move to drive desktop GPUs to notebooks, hence marking a larger difference than you might see between a desktop 970 and a desktop 1050Ti. 
The 1050 Ti does well in this regard, and the GTX 1060 MSI GE62 VR notebook runs at least 32% faster with its 77 FPS average, which is also faster than the mobile 980M and the Fanbook's corresponding CPU. The GTX 1070 is next at 114fps average for a 48% speed increase over the 1060 and about a 2x speed increase over the 1050Ti. The GTX 1080 Clevo notebook is at the very top with its 139fps average, and we haven't been able to get hands-on with a 1080 notebook since the launch, so this is the only set of numbers that we have for them. We've got more tests too, but before that, a quick discussion on the numbers. With laptops, the big question, as is always the case with laptops, is how much you really need. It's not like a desktop where you've got effectively unlimited power. You're not worried about battery life. And you can upgrade things like your monitor to be more than whatever comes with the laptop, for instance. So with a laptop, you're looking at if you're stuck on a 1080p screen, how much do you need? Because as you increase the GPU's capabilities, so too do you decrease the life of the battery if you're trying to do any kind of actual gaming while mobile or portable, although that is hopefully somewhat uncommon because you're, you're just going to murder the battery in a matter of an hour or less in some cases. So the 1050 Ti so far with our baseline overview results looks to be doing pretty well. It hands on around 60 FPS for the most part, if not above by a decent amount or slightly under. And if you're not concerned about hitting the highest possible graphics quality settings with a high frame rate, it's not a bad performer because with a notebook, ultimately you care about other things as well, like form factor and battery life. And the 1050 Ti will enable both of those better than some of these other notebooks GPUs will. So that's one of the big things to consider as we roll into the next set of benchmarks. We're down to games where we have fewer devices present but can still start showing differences between at least the 1060 and 1050 Ti with a splash of other 900 series laptops. The 1050 Ti runs Metro Last Light with an average FPS of 51, outpacing the 970M system by 26%. The GTX 1060 unit runs nearly 48% faster than the 1050 Ti putting out a frame rate which is almost always above 60 FPS, with some exceptions in the low department. Black Ops 3 is next and has always been fairly well optimized. This game places the 1050 Ti notebook at 76 FPS average when running high settings with FXAA. That makes the 1050 Ti about 23% faster than the 970M notebook, and makes the 1060 about 44% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti notebook. There's decent scaling here, but it again becomes a question of whether or not you need the power when considering other items for a notebook's consideration. Again, like form factor, cooling, and noise. And this is our deprecated Overwatch test. We've since replaced it with lawn match benchmarks, which we detailed in our Overwatch graphics optimization guide and in the summary of results for this benchmark. Because we're comparing against laptops we no longer have access to, we're looking at the numbers on the screen here. They're still accurate with regard to scaling, just a bit higher than what you'd see in a match. The 1050 Ti places about 19% ahead of the 970M and 5700HQ build, with the 1060 at 40% ahead of the GTX 1050 Ti. This is fairly consistent with our other numbers and isn't anything too exciting in really any department, but the 1050 Ti does pretty well with Overwatch, all things considered. So that provides the baseline of where the GTX 1050 Ti performs in notebooks. Obviously there are some differences because not all notebooks are going to be created equal with the 1050 Ti. So the things to keep in mind here are that our model had an i7 CPU. So if you're looking at something with an i5, which is pretty rare in notebooks, but can happen, then the performance would be different. Overall though, this gives us a baseline. It gives us percent scaling to the 1060 in the very least. In some games, 1070 and 1080. We are testing the 1070 next and we'll be adding that. So then we'll have 1050 Ti, 1060 and a 1070 to compare to which is a pretty good set of benchmarks for laptops. The other immediate content to follow will be our review of this notebook. So this was the GE 72 7RE Apache Pro, and we've also got another GE 62 to look at, uh, but the 7RE will come first because it's, it, there are some interesting things with it. We're expanding our notebook testing a bit, which will be pretty fun. So be sure to subscribe for that. As always, you can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus or also join our Patreon Discord there if you want to hang out and chat with everyone. Otherwise, store.gamersnexus.net for stores. Subscribe for more, gamersnexus.net for the website, and I'll see you all next time.
and I'll see you all next time. I think I said for stores, not for shirts. <laughs>